Planet Earth is home to some spectacular relics from bygone eras, constructions that seem to defy the technological capabilities of their time. Strange and mysterious, thought-provoking and puzzling, these unexplained archaeological discoveries keep attracting the attention of researchers worldwide. The scientific community has not yet been able to shed light upon them. Let's see some of the greatest findings that still remain unexplained. The site of Sacsayhaumon consists of a fortress that has layered walls. Multiple walls located behind each other, the rear ones higher than the frontal ones. The more one advances inwards, one has to climb higher, meeting more walls. The immense fortress was put together with the usage of huge stone blocks. Nobody knows exactly who built Saxihuman, when, and most importantly, how. Saxihuman can be admired mostly for the remarkable architecture engineering skills that were needed for its creation. The Incas told the Spaniards that they weren't the ones who built Saxihuman, but the giants. In their mythology, there were huge people living in the Cusco area and they carried the huge stone blocks and put them together. It's believed that the upper parts of the fort contained smaller stones, which were easily demolished and taller moved away and used for the construction of colonial buildings. The large stones were too heavy and the Spaniards simply left them in their original shape. Specialists affirm that originally the walls of the fort were approximately 3 meters or 9.84 feet higher than today. Shockingly, anyone with a keen eye can notice that some stone blocks used in constructing the complex are gigantic, the size of small trucks even. Nobody knows how these huge stones were cut and moved into place. Many stones weighed over 50 tons, and the biggest one was over 120 tons. By comparison, a U.S. Army Abrams tank weighs just over 50 tons. Imagine lifting a tank. Even with modern cranes, it would be a very difficult task. Now imagine lifting twice that weight, about 120 tons, in the Middle Ages, when it's believed that this fortress was constructed. Hard to imagine how the Incas could have done this. We can also add the fact that the Incas did not know the wheel, they did not write either. The cutting of the hard rocks is another mystery that so far no one has given any plausible answer to. With understanding the construction of Saxihuman, we're no further than with understanding the construction of the Egyptian pyramids. Famous Spanish writer Garcilaso de la Vega once wrote about Saxihuman. This fortress surpasses the constructions known as the Seven Wonders of the World, for in the case of a long broad wall like that of Babylon or the Colossus of Rhodes or the Pyramids of Egypt or the other monuments, one can see clearly how they were executed. They did it by summoning an immense body of workers and accumulating more and more material day by day and year by year. They overcame all difficulties by employing human effort over a long period. But it's indeed beyond the power of imagination to understand how these Indians, unacquainted with devices, engines, and implements, could have cut, dressed, raised, and lowered great rocks, more like lumps of hills than building stones, and set them so exactly in their places. For this reason, and because the Indians were so familiar with demons, the work is attributed to enchantment. Most people today consider the fortress an Inca construction, though they themselves told the Spaniards that Saxihuman was built by giants.
Writers like Eric Von Daniken bring the theories further as far as talking about alien activity in this area when they speak about the Nazca Lines in Tijuanaco, this latter site being in Bolivia. Indeed, many of us doubt the fact that the Incas could have constructed Saxai Human. The immense blocks are just as large as some used in the building of Olante Tambo. Were the lower, larger rocks placed there by some other culture, some have even pointed out to the Chachapoyas culture, those who built Coilap. Estimates tell us that approximately 20,000 to 30,000 people were needed for the construction of Saxai Human. The works would have went on for about 60 years. The name of the city comes from the Nahautl Teotihuacan, or the place where men become gods. Simpler said people acknowledge it as the city of gods. The Nahautl origin of the word was put to use by the Mexica Aztecs in order to distinguish this city that a previous civilization already built. When the Mexica arrived here, the city was in Rex. Up until today, the original name that the civilization constructor give it is still unknown. Many reasons set Teotihuacan under the wraps of a huge mystery. We only know it was one of the most important cities in the American continent. The rest of it is only a blurry, uncompleted image. As a matter of fact, researchers still analyze the real origins of the city. Near the outset of the Christian era, the city of the gods was only a village. However, it was a place that gained in popularity as the capital of devotion in the Anahuac Valley. The first significant structures most likely formed at that time, as excavations performed at the Pyramid of the Moon confirmed it. The city increased its reputation during the Classic period, 3rd to 7th centuries AD. It reached an area of around 21 square kilometers with a population varying between 100,000 and 200,000 citizens. All the region of Mesoamerica sensed the power of Teotihuacan. Discoveries around Tikal, Monte Alban, and other sites proved that they had a connection with this city of gods. Before the Spaniards arrived in Mesoamerica, the city was a long time deserted. Even the few accounts we have in our historical sources do not reveal proper information about the first inhabitants, but rather only those who lived after its downfall. The Naha sources of Bernardino de Sahagún believed that this city was the point where the gods assembled to give a surge to Nahawi Olin, the fifth son according to local mythology. This period is inherent in the contemporary age. As reported by colonial sources, the Nahas believed that Quinametzin built the city. They were a group of giants that populated the world during the previous era. The pyramids were believed to be large tombs of the gods, creators of the city. Moreover, the city was a holy place where after death, men became gods. Archaeologists claim the advanced layout of Teotihuacan puts forward that the ancient founders had knowledge of architecture, but intricate mathematical and astronomical science as well. One of the most amazing things that distinguishes this city from the others is that an aerial image of it presents it as a circuit board with two large processor chips. In this case, the chips are the Sun Pyramid and the Moon Pyramid. 
The fact that it resembles a modern computer isn't the only thing that's weird. A large amount of mica found in the monuments is also abstruse. The mineral is located 3,000 miles away in Brazil. It's present in almost all the structures and temples around the city. Mica is solid when displayed to electricity, light, humidity, and intense temperatures. It has excellent electrical characteristics as a non-conductor and as a dielectric. It can also maintain an electrostatic range while consuming minimal energy in the form of heat. So we literally have a large ancient city whose authors are anonymous to history and created structures that resemble a computer board when seen from the air. Is there an otherworldly explanation behind Teotihuacan? Is it possible that the whole city wasn't just a city but some sort of an energy collector? The mysterious ruins of Baalbek, one of the great power places of the ancient world. For thousands of years, its secrets have been shrouded in darkness or bathed in an artificial light by those who would offer us a simplistic solution to its mysteries. The Temple of Jupiter is one of the most impressive temples in Baalbek. It measures 88 by 48 meters and stands on a podium 13 meters above the surrounding terrain and 7 meters above the courtyard. It's reached by a monumental stairway. One of the most amazing engineering achievements is the podium, which was built with some of the largest stone blocks ever hewn. On the west side of the podium is the Trilithon, a celebrated group of three enormous stones weighing about 800 tons each. According to Phoenician legends, Baalbek was the location where Baal first arrived on Earth in ancient times. Here we find gigantic megalithic stones incorporated into the foundation, each weighing between 800 and 1200 tons and perfectly fitted together. Have they served as a huge landing platform for the aliens who once visited our planet? Eastern Lebanon, the Becca Valley. Here stands the ruins of Heliopolis, built in the 4th century BC by Alexander the Great to honor Zeus. But beneath the Corinthian columns and remnants of both Greek and Roman architecture lie the ruins of a site that is much, much older. According to archaeologists, it dates back nearly 9,000 years. Archaeological surveys have revealed that the enormous stone foundation that lies at the base of the site dates back tens of thousands of years. Some of the stones are of such magnitude that modern machinery is incapable of putting them there. But somehow our ancestors were able to do this. But with what purpose? These are perfectly fitted 1,500-ton stones assembled into the biggest ancient foundation known to present-day science. What exactly made the builders leave without a clue regarding their existence and what purpose the site once held remains a complete mystery. Is it possible that Baalbek had been considered a sacred place for tens of thousands of years because it was where extraterrestrial beings first arrived on Earth?
In 1994, a chance discovery by a Kurdish shepherd and the forgotten notes of a previous archaeological survey led German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt to the find of a lifetime. A series of megaliths located in southeastern Turkey, known as Gobekli Tepe, indicate civilization may have existed much earlier than previously thought. These megaliths are not just random stones, but rather shaped and sculpted into pillars pointing toward the sky. Engravings and carvings depict animals both familiar and unknown, and there's some indication of cuneiform style writing. Carbon dating, a method that determines the age of something by measuring how much of the radioisotope carbon-14 is remaining, places the earliest time of construction at 11,000 to 12,000 years ago. That being the case, civilization has quite possibly existed much longer than previously speculated. Gobekli Tepe, which literally translates to Potbelly Hill, is located on a mountain ridge just northeast of Sanlıurfa, Turkey. Looking south, one can see the border of Syria, which was once part of ancient Mesopotamia or the Fertile Crescent. Did humankind evolve from the top of this hill? More than 15 years of excavation and study haven't brought us much closer to the secrets of this structure that challenges every theory presented in modern history. Klaus Schmidt has been overseeing the excavation of this area since the German Archaeological Institute was contacted by the San Liurfan Museum in 1994. A shepherd had discovered the tip of a buried stone structure, and upon seeing the extent of what appeared to be underneath, he informed the museum. It didn't take long to see that this would be a major undertaking to dig and find what was underneath. Further investigation showed an American archaeological survey had been done of the area in 1964 and had noted the stones underneath were not natural. For reasons unknown, there was no further attempt to find out what lay beneath outside of a few speculations. Before that chance encounter by the shepherd, who just happened to glance down at the right time, there was no further consideration given to the area. Since the discovery, there have been many theories about what these megaliths have to tell us. Was it a temple of some ancient religion? Did the pillars that remain once support roofs to house the people in the area? What of the animal carvings on nearly every surface? Many of them show animals and humans interacting along with depictions of snakes and reptiles that appear menacing. Upon closer inspection, there is writing on the stones that grace the hilltop. This writing includes several dingiers, an ancient cuneiform sign of the star. To take it even further, is it possible that the writing tells more of the Sumerian beliefs and extraterrestrials? As with other ancient structures such as Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid, there is the question of how the building could have possibly been done with what was available at the time. One theory has been that humans didn't build these monuments, but rather a race of extraterrestrials that had marked certain areas of the earth for habitation. The late Zechariah Sitchin believed he had translated these Sumerian texts to reveal that humans were created by the Anunnaki or those who came from the heavens. If the translations are correct, the Sumerians believe the Anunnaki came to Earth to mine its resources. They created human beings for doing the work and the building. Could this structure have been orchestrated by these beings using humans as slave labor? Schmidt believes that for this to have been done by human beings, it would have taken a minimum of 500 workers who would have had to have supplies brought in from elsewhere. There have been intact huts found inside Gobekli Tepe which indicate possible housing for laborers working on the structure. 
it would have taken hundreds of years to complete, and the construction shows that time and intricacy was put into its creation. It is possible for humans to have built this monument, however, it should be noted that at this time, no remains of tools have been found to show how it was constructed. It's simply there. A testament to a time that changes everything we thought we knew about how it all began. As the excavation continues, the question of why it was buried in the first place has also puzzled many. Very shortly after the last of the structure was built, it seems to have been buried deeply enough to hide its very existence for thousands of years. What would cause the builders of this ancient temple that obviously took a lot of work and detail to bury it so far underneath the ground that it couldn't be seen? Theories range from the structure being hidden from the Anunnaki out of fear of their return or an attempt to preserve the site in case they did. Burying the temple certainly succeeded in preserving it. After 10,000 years, the pillars and engravings are still in very good condition. In modern history, we have struggled to understand what these structures could possibly mean or who was responsible for building them. Our minds automatically look for what similarities and common threads they all have. They all seem to be built in circular patterns, and they're all built high above the ground, as if the intent was to be seen from the sky. Were these specific points possibly marking territories or energy grids? What are the possibility of landing strips? Such large structures with little evidence showing how they were built ask far more questions than they answer. Many of these ancient monuments have carvings on them that indicate at the very least a belief in life outside the earthly realm. If that belief was a reality, perhaps the knowledge of physics that these beings may have possessed could reverse magnetics, nullifying gravity and thus making the enormous stones easily maneuvered. That is simply a theory, of course, and the very discovery of this structure proves that previous theories were wrong. It may be we have underestimated what people of the Neolithic period were capable of doing. Gobekli Tepe was the only one of these monuments that seemed to be deliberately hidden. Why? How did it remain undiscovered for so long? The survey that was done in 1964 by the University of Chicago, along with the University of Istanbul, did note that there was something underneath the ground, but they had no reason to suspect anything other than an ancient cemetery or a possible former monastery. For 30 more years, the mysteries of its existence stayed underground until a shepherd, a museum, and a dedicated archaeologist started the journey to unearth what could be the first religious-oriented structure of civilized man. Or another piece to the extraterrestrial puzzle. Gobekli Tepe is certainly an interesting piece, and whether you believe in ancient alien involvement or not, this is a fascinating glimpse into our own ancient past. Alayan Taitambo According to some scholars and historians, the architectural complex of Alayan Taitambo belongs to the Inca imperial stage. That is, the one included between the Incas Pachacutec and Huayna Capac. This stage, which comprised only three generations of Inca rulers, 
and that preceded the conquerors for only 150 to 200 years. The apparent little time that existed between the design and construction of this granite citadel or fortress makes many researchers doubt their true origin. The defenses that face Cusco, as if they wanted to defend the city from the Incas themselves, are another of the riddles that Aliente Tambo presents. It's important to emphasize that this fortress shows the foresight spirit of the Incas, who supplied it with water through underground aqueducts, whose places of capture were state secrets in their time and are still not discovered. Already at the top of the architectural complex, six gigantic blocks are discovered that apparently belonged to the Temple of the Sun, neatly worked as if it were a soft and moldable material. How did they manage to do it? The housing complex exhibits houses with solid walls of carved rock, with doors of trapezoidal shapes and divided by streets with straight lines where the water runs in perfect channels. Aliente Tambo is located at an altitude of 2,792 meters, or 9,160 feet, above sea level. During the Inca Empire, Aliente Tambo was the actual state of Emperor Pachacuti, who conquered the region, built the city, and a ceremonial center. At the time of the Spanish conquest of Peru, it served as a bastion of Manco Inca Yampancuy, leader of the Inca resistance. The citadel is huge, located 50 kilometers from Machu Picchu, and served as a temple and a fortress. At some unknown moment, and for unknown reasons, this great project was mysteriously abandoned and is one of the most spectacular archaeological sites not only in Peru, but in the world. How were those titanic blocks of stone brought to the top of the mountain of the quarries many kilometers away? How were they cut and with what equipment? How were they planted and put in place? There are archaeologists and scientists who want us to believe that the dense and hard andesite rock was cut and shaped by means of stone or bronze tools. Such an explanation is so absurd that it's not even worthy of consideration. There are no tools or stone utensils in place to cut or mold the andesite, and the bronze does not make any dent. Eric von Daniken, in his series of books that begin with Chariots of the Gods, has a theory that the Andean megalithic works were built by extraterrestrials, gods who visited the Earth a long time ago and brought civilization to primitive man. The scientific community before such an idea simply laughed. When you think about your theories, many ancient monuments around the planet that challenge a rational or conventional explanation come to mind, and you inevitably start thinking about other factors. The Temple of the Sun in Olean Tetambo is made of andesite granite. Some of the quarries from the Temple of Sol weigh more than 40 tons and were brought from an elevated quarry on the mountain that lies on the other side of the river. How is it that someone, even with modern technology, can move so many stones of that size towards the lower part of the mountain, cross the river, and then climb them for several hundred meters to a place where the Temple of the Sun is located? Millions of people around the globe are fascinated with achievements of ancient civilizations. The truth is that a number of ancient sites point to the fact that ancient civilizations lived on Earth in the distant past had incredible technologies that are still misunderstood today. 
A temple that ancients have carved out of a mountain rock is an existing evidence of that. Located in Ellora, Maharashtra, India, the temple symbolizes Mount Kailash, the home of Lord Shiva, one of the most important ancient Hindu deities. The Kailasa temple is the 16th from a total of 34 caves which were literally excavated out of the surrounding rock. The temple originated around 8th century AD, but conspiracy theorists suggest the caves are much older. It's really intriguing that technology of the period could not have contributed to such a monumentous construction task. This amazing structure cannot be replicated with ease, even today in the 21st century. Unlike many temples that were built from the ground up, the Kailasa temple was carved out straight from the rock of a mountain. To add further amazement, staggering 400,000 tons of rock were excavated and hauled out. Some researchers believe that builders of the Kailasa temple used a vertical excavation method to achieve what they did. They started at the top of the original boulders and worked their way downward, carving out one of the most fascinating ancient temple complexes on the planet. But how did they do it? What did the ancient builders of the Ellora Caves use to excavate and build? Mainstream scholars indicate that the caves were built with use of hammers, chisels, and picks thousands of years ago. One may wonder at the scope of the construction and estimate the temple had to be completed after many decades or centuries. However, according to scientific reports, it took less than 18 years to finish the construction of the temple. It was estimated that 60 tons of rocks were being removed every day during temple's construction phase. It's believed temple workers labored for 12 hours a day hauling at least five tons of rock out from the mountain per hour. Scientists still have not fully figured out the construction methods used in conjunction with the tools available during the period, and were left baffled at the scope of the operation. Whoever has built these spectacular caves thousands of years ago definitely had more advanced tools than ordinary hammers, chisels, and picks. The Kailasa Temple is part of a complex of 34 monasteries and temples which span over an area of 2 kilometers. As they were all cut out from the mountainside, they are collectively known as the Alora Caves, carved out from a basalt cliff. The temple has a height of 98 feet, was 109 feet wide, and had a depth of 164 feet. This makes it possibly one of the biggest known structures of its kind on the planet. This incredible temple caused a real sensation among the archaeologists who were unable to explain how such a structure, which truly On the Micronesian island of Pohnpei, there exists a mysterious ruined city of stone known as the Venice of the Pacific. Up till today, it's not known how Nan Madal, which is made up of massive stone blocks, was constructed since none of the peoples living in the area have been known to possess the required organization or knowledge to pull off such a feat. It's been uninhabited for a long, long time because it's believed to be inaccessible and haunted. But now new images of the ruins, caught on camera by satellites, reveal to archaeologists this is an island with something that goes far beyond ghosts and local legends. It might be the Atlantis of the Pacific. According to experts, it was a political and religious center, 
yet home and cemetery to the first ruling elite class. It was discovered in 1928, and now, thanks to the modern technology available, scientists were able to explore it in more detail. New astounding images from above led them to think it might be a lost world, the Atlantis of the Pacific, that lies in the middle of the ocean, far from any known civilizations. Composed of 97 small artificial islets, separated from each other by narrow channels of water, and once capital of the Saudalar dynasty, its origin is dated back to the 2nd century AD. The satellite images show megalithic stone buildings with walls 25 meters high and 17 meters wide. It's been calculated that 750,000 tons of black rock were used to build such majestic structures. It would be 1,850 tons moved each year and without our contemporary technology. We still wonder how this ancient civilization could do that, like the Egyptians did with the pyramids. A local legend says the stones have been flown to the location using black magic, but scientists disagree believing basalt boulders were shipped from the other side of the island using rafts, while palm tree trunks were used to leverage them into the right position. What do you believe? We can't really be sure it's the real Atlantis, but the mystery continues along with the legend or fear about ghosts infesting the island and fireballs locals sometimes see during the night. This made it an untouchable scary place people prefer to go to only during the day. All these islets are remarkably similar and geometrically shaped, but the reason is still unclear. And another question arises. Why did they build the city in such a remote place, in the middle of nowhere? The mystery continues. In 1814, 200 men crossed the lush Kedu plains of central Java to search for a legendary mountain near the small village of Boro. For six weeks, they slash and burn the choking vegetation. They cleared away tons of volcanic ash. Hidden beneath the debris, they find strange figures carved in stone. Thousands of them. They had just discovered Borobudur, one of the greatest temples on Earth. The temple is the second largest Buddhist temple after Angkor Wat Temple in Cambodia and would not be out of place as a new wonder of the world. There are several versions of the origin of the name of this temple. The first version says that the name comes from the Sanskrit Borobudur is Bara, which means temple or monastery, and Beduhur, which means high or above. The second version says that the name Borobudur is likely to come from the word Samhara Bhutara, which means mountain slope terraces. The third version is interpreted by Professor Dr. Pora Borjiroko. He explained that the word Borobudur comes from the word Bohoro, which means monastery or dorm, and Budur, which means above. When we see the reality of Borobudur's immense size, it's not surprising that we wonder how and why this temple was built. How was it possible to pile up thousands of stone blocks to create such a magnificent structure at a time when people had no knowledge of sophisticated tools and equipment? How did they carve the thousands of reliefs to produce a work of art? The temple has nine platforms, of which the lower six have a square shape and the rest are circular. The upper platforms of the temple were built with 72 small stupas surrounding a larger one. Each stupa has the shape of a bell and is decorated with different holes. There is a Buddha statue in each stupa. Whoever built this temple used 55,000 cubic meters of stones. This is without a doubt a monumental building that cannot be fully comprehended unless seen in the flesh. With the temple in decay, a restoration was carried out between 1907 and 1911 using the principles of anastolosis and led by Theodore Van Erp. Van Erp dismantled and rebuilt the upper three circular platforms and stupas. 
Along the way, Van Erp discovered more things he could do to improve the monument. He submitted another proposal, which was approved with the additional cost of 34,600 guilders. Borobudur has been restored to its old glory. Many attempts have been made to uncover the mystery surrounding the temple since its discovery, yet the monument remains a mystery. When was the construction of Borobudur begun? When was the original foot of the temple covered and replaced by a platform for processions? When was the temple completed? These are some of the questions to which no definite answers have yet been given. These are just some of the mysteries from our remote past that remain unsolved today. We hope that one day these mysteries will be solved so we can find out more about the history of this planet that we live on.